Hey guys, it's Darren at Green Pro Cleaner here, window cleaning in Nottingham and Derbyshire and property maintenance. Uh, today I want to talk about pricing a window cleaning job. Um, and this is something that there is always a continuous debate on the forum. Um, there's always somebody saying, how much would you charge for this? How much would you charge for that? So on and so forth. And the truth of the matter is um, it's nobody else's business whatsoever. What you charge is entirely down to you. Um, whatever you want to make. Some people have a set amount per hour they want to make. Some people have a minimum per window that they charge. And of course, whether you're in the south of the country, down on the on the Cornish coast, for example, or whether you're way up north on the on the Carlisle border, um, prices drastically vary north to south. Um, I don't really understand this. I don't know why, because a window is a window. The size is the same north to south. Your can of pop in Tesco's is the same. Your liter of diesel at the garage is the same. So why the hell isn't window cleaning? Um, but in short, oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to pop this on YouTube. So this is for the UK guys, really, um, about pricing in the UK. I do understand that if you're in the smoke, like you're down in, the, in London, where you've got your congestion charging and your environmental zones and traffic is just a ball ache full stop anyway, that yeah, it could take you a good hour plus just to get to the one job. So hence, you've got to charge accordingly. But uh, today I want to talk about this three bed semi that I'm sitting in right now. It's my house. Um, Typical three bed semi. I've got two upstairs windows on the front. I've got a large bay uh, downstairs, a small laundry room window in the front door. At the side of the house, there's a, a landing window and a kitchen door. And then to the back of the house, we've got the conservatory, two more upstairs windows, and a kitchen window. Now, this job, you pull up on the top of the drive, uh, nice easy access, no gates locked, nothing to climb over, uh, gates always open, just walk straight on through, pull your hose down the driveway, no wheelie bins blocking it, no dog turds everywhere. In and out without the conservatory you're done in 15 minutes and that's working at a, a leisurely pace to do a quality job so you can rock up here at a leisurely pace bang out a quality job take your time make sure it's all done right this isn't pricing for guys that just want to splash water on a window and run off and do a cowboy job this is for guys that take care of their customers windows frames seals doors whole nine yards so 15 minutes you're in and out so for a house this size up this way i charge 15 pound now my conservatory has Two French doors, which I would have on the back of the house anyway if the conservatory wasn't there. Um, so we'll forget about those. Uh, but then it has eight other large panes of glass, which is more than I have in the whole uh, back of the house and the side of the house put together. But I can't charge another 15 quid realistically. Nobody up here would pay £30 for that, yeah, for the windows and doors regular. Um, so instead, I add on a fiver for the conservatory. And I always tell the customers when I'm pricing a job that the conservatory is not included. If they want that doing, that will be an extra... XYZ dependent upon the size of the conservatory of course. So this house here is £20 once a month, windows, frames, seals, doors. And people actually pay that. They pay it because they know that I'm going to offer them a regular service, a reliable service and a, a quality service. And that if they've got any problems, pick up the phone, I'll come back and sort them out. But uh, they never do because they never have any problems. Because I've allowed that 15 minutes of time to make sure that the job is done properly. Personally, I aim to earn £40 an hour when I'm at work during the day by myself. Um, so £15, that's £15 a minute when I'm on the glass. But then from here, I might have a couple of minute drive to the next job. And you have to allow for that during your day because that's where your time disappears. You're travelling between the jobs. Now, I had a job similar, um, £20-pounder. Uh, in fact, it was actually a, a small farmhouse up in um, Chesterfield, which is a 25-minute drive from me. I went up to look at it and uh, foolishly, I accepted the job. Now the biggest problem was it's a 25 minute drive there. I've only got that one customer up in that area. Then it's a 25 minute drive to the nearest job that I have anywhere else. So 50 minutes all to do a 10 minute job for 20 quid. Um, so I'm actually losing money on that job. I'm not earning 20 pound. I'm actually losing money by the time you factor in the time, the diesel and everything else. So I informed the customer that it was too far out for me, uh, that I wouldn't be able to maintain them in future. But they're nice people. There's always a cup of tea on and the cash is always in hand. So happy days. Um, so I endeavoured to find them another window cleaner. Uh, through the forum, I happened to know uh, a lad up in Chesterfield. Phoned him up, said, do you want the job? Uh, he was, yes, please. So I handed him over the job and uh, they've got a happy ongoing relationship. They've got a reliable window cleaner. Um, they still think nicely of me because I took care of them by finding a replacement and I'm not losing money by having to drive all the way out there. Now, you've got to think about your minimum pricing as well in window cleaning. My minimum is £12 and that's for your typical tiny little bungalow with no extension or conservatory or even a terraced house 
um, and I'm talking about the type of terraces that has one upstairs window, one downstairs window and a front door and then on the back you'll have a living room window, uh, an upstairs bedroom window and perhaps a little kitchen window if it's the type that's extended along the back a little bit. And, um, but that's not £12 for any terrace house. That's £12 for any terrace house within a stone's throw of where I live, of where I work, of my main core business. If I've got to drive a little ways out to do it, well, that has to be factored in. And they're going to have to pay a premium. Somebody's got to pay for the diesel, and it's not going to be me. The business pays for the diesel, and the customers put the money into the business, which then pays for the diesel. So if I have to use more diesel to get further out to a customer, they're going to have to pay for that. So a typical terrace, for me, some of my books are 15 16 pounds because they're that far out, and the customers still pay it. Now, I hear some of you screaming at your, at your monitors there, at your tablets, etc., going, no one up in Newcastle's going to pay 15 quid for a terrace. Then don't take them on. Just let them go, mate. You're not doing yourself any favours. You don't need them. You don't want them. You don't want to be going out there doing four-pound jobs. You don't want to be going out there going, uh, hearing customers who go, oh, my last window cleaner only charged £3.20. Well, when was that, mate? 1970 bloody two. Not anymore, they don't. Nowadays, prices have got to be realistic. If a customer doesn't want to pay it, one of the biggest phobias that window cleaners seem to have on the forum is saying no. It seems that we don't have the ability to just say, sorry, Mr. Smith, not a job for me. It's something I learned a long time ago is to walk away from jobs. You will actually save yourself money by walking away from a job, by just saying no, by saying thank you very much, not for me, too far out of my round, um, or if they won't give you the price, there's no haggling. The minute you've set your price, stand by it. £12, £15, £100. You just sit there and go, that's the price. Oh, is that the very best you can do? Yes, it is. That is the price. That's exactly what this job costs everybody else in your neighbourhood of a typical house. That's what it's going to cost you. And if they don't like that, they don't have to have your service. And if you're worried about other window cleaners getting a bit of business on your street and taking that customer, so what? Let them have it. Let that other guy do the cheap crap work. Let him waste his time with them. Don't be chasing after it. He's not going to take your customers off you because the only people that you get for those discount bargain prices are your discount bargain cowboys. And they're going to do a lousy job. You might lose a customer here or a customer there to them. One or two. But then they're going to come back begging later on when they realise that their sales haven't been done in 20 years. Um, not that you'll wait 20 years to get them back, of course. But the short point being is this is a business like any other. And like any other, it's got to pay, whether you're in the north, whether you're in the south. Um, a friend of mine down Cornwall, a uh, young lad I know, window cleaning a year, got an inquiry on Facebook the other night. And he says, uh, oh, yeah, I've got the job for £8. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? £8. And uh, I says, you're mental. He's like, oh, yeah, but it's only a small house. And I said to him, you're not actually charging for the windows, mate. I says, you're not charging... Uh, for cleaning the windows you're charging for everything else you're charging for turning the key in that thirty thousand pound sweet little pickup truck of yours you're charging for the insurance on your pickup for your liability insurance for your diesel for your work uniforms for the thousands of pounds you got invested in your wfp tool so on and so forth and for the years that you've spent acquiring the knowledge to do the job properly that's what you're actually charging for and he retorted to me that uh, oh well i've got a couple of others on that street anyway and my point was that it doesn't matter if you've got one house here on the street or you've got, let's say you've got two houses on the street, excuse that, that's the wrong way around, two houses on the street, um, and you've got a third one here. Oh, well, I'll just do this one at this price. It doesn't matter because I've got these two on there. Well, it does matter because if you didn't have these two, you would still go out to do this job. So this job still has to pay for it. What happens if you lose those two? Let's say Mrs. Smith dies and Mr. Thompson moves out of town. You're still left with that one job. But if you're now going out there at a discount bargain basement price, you're going to end up not enjoying the job. You're going to end up hating it and not wanting to do it, and you'll piss them off, and finally that'll end up to a bad review on their Facebook or the Google or wherever they found you to begin with, and that's not what you want. People also go, uh, another friend of mine just down the way here, um, just in uh, never, uh, East, excuse me, getting tongue-tied, uh, East Nottingham, uh, he did a job for uh, a customer, and uh, he says, oh yeah, I, I did him such and such a price. It was a low ball price. And I'm like, what the hell are you playing at me? Well, why so cheap? Oh, well, to get in the door there, because uh, you know they're, they're telling me they know everybody on the street, this, that, the other, so on and so forth. Nobody on that street is ever going to recommend him. He's a lovely guy, and he does a bang on thorough job. In fact, he's a shitload more um, uh, attentive to detail than, than I am. 
and uh, he will do a bang up job, a 100% job. But uh, they may have promised to recommend him, but when they see their neighbour in the morning, nobody's going to sit there and say, uh, uh, hello, Bob, quick word, I've just found a wonderful new window cleaner and I'd like you to uh, give him a call to give you a quote. Are they bollocks? At the end of the day, if their neighbour sees you on that street, and does need a window cleaner, then perhaps they're going to ask. But people will promise the earth. Uh, it reminds me, I did a, a roof cleaning job last year, a um, couple of hours north of me here, and I put in my price, and uh, it was £1,400, and it was a day's work, and uh, it was a good day's work, a hard day's work, but a fair price for the size of the job I was doing. The customer says to me, oh, well, uh, can you do us any better for cash? And I says, no, that price is for cash. Because on the larger add-on services, I only accept cash. I'm not going to deal with any form of attempted uh, credit card claim backs or any of that sort of thing. Still goes through the books, but I collect in cash. And they were like, oh, well, can't you do us any better? Because once we have something done on our property, then everybody on this estate has something done on our property. I said to him, I'll tell you what I'll do, sir. I says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the job and you're going to pay me the price that I'm asking for. It says, when I'm finished, I'm going to put my signboards outside. And I had some uh, large, correct signboards like the... Um, the type you see from the estate agents and I put them out on the driveway out the front and uh, happy days I, I staked them into the ground and I said to him and what will happen says for every person on this estate that phones me up and says uh, yeah you did Mr Brown's house uh, can you come and do our roof says when I come up here to do their roof I'm going to knock on your door and put a crisp 50 pound note in your hand well I've still got those 50 pound notes he's not had one of them back it's been nearly a year now so it just goes to show that you know while well, people promise you the earth and it's always the carrot and uh, you know and if it's not the carrot of oh, we'll get you all the business over here well here's the stick of oh, well you know if you don't do me a better price I'm not going to have you well stuff yeah if they don't want your service at your price they don't have to have it um, you know, people, window cleaners often will use the argument of, uh, do you go into Tesco's and haggle? Do you go into Asda's and haggle? Well, I've done it. I've haggled in Sainsbury's and got a knockdown price on something. Um, admittedly, it was uh, um, some cans that were a bit damaged, but still, it didn't matter. I, I, I did it, and it goes to prove that you can. There's nothing wrong with a client asking for a lower price, um, but just be ready to say no if you feel it's valid. Uh, if you think they're going to be the type that are going to haggle, put a couple of quid on the price. So then when they go, can you do a better price? Oh, all right, between me, you and the fence post, Mr. Jones, I knock a couple of quid off. And happy days. But uh, at the end of the day, stick to your guns. Prices are prices. Um, whether I was working where I am now in the Peak District, whether I was working back in uh, Nottingham where I used to live uh, last year, or even back in the Channel Islands back home in Jersey where I started out window cleaning, prices, my prices have hardly varied. Uh, they stay pretty damn consistent. So why some of you are struggling, and I meet other window cleaners on the streets around me here that, uh, that are charging six, seven pound for the same jobs that I'm getting 15, 20 pound for. And they're like, oh, don't know how you're getting that. The answer is simple. I'm asking for it. And people realize in today's society that getting somebody to come out to your house and do a job, um, they, they should actually feel guilty. They should feel, uh, it, uh, they should feel bad. They're insulting, they're degrading you. Your time is only worth a fiver to me, mate. Here's a five pound note. Come on, buddy. Come on, fetch, fetch, good boy. Just see what I'm saying. That that's how they're treating you. Um, so at the end of the day, stick to your guns. Starting out is the hardest. When you're starting out, you want to take every job you can get your hands on. You need that money coming in. When I started this round this time round, I was totally broke, and it was about putting food on the table today. And I was taking any damn job I could lay my hands on. But I knew full well that business would pick up quickly, and it did. But if you're not quite that desperate, if you've got a little bit behind you and you can roll yourself for a couple of months, don't be doing the bargain basement crap. Leave that to other people. Build yourself around a quality, reliable customers and the rest will come. And what will happen is when you have quality, reliable customers at good prices, you'll enjoy doing the work. You'll do a better job. Your customers will be happy. Your referrals will come in. That's when your referrals come in, not when you're being promised them by everybody. Just when you're doing a thoroughly good job all the time, every month, turning up. Yes, Mrs. Smith. No, Mrs. Smith. Thank you for the cup of tea, Mrs. Smith. See you next month, Mrs. Smith. And then all of a sudden you'll be getting a phone call. Oh, Vera Smith at 24 says that you're a good window cleaner and I haven't seen mine for six months. Happy days. That's when the referrals start rolling in. But uh, once again, as I say, it's very simple. What you want to earn, it's entirely down to you. Nobody else's business but yours. If you want to go out and clean five bedroom detached houses for a pound a house, ain't no one going to stop you. You won't make a lot of friends in the window cleaning game, but still ain't nobody going to stop you. And if you want to charge a hundred pound a house, well, once again, entirely down to you 
and some customers will actually pay it. So at the end of the day, good luck to you. I hope you, you found a, a gem or two in this, uh, in these words of wisdom from Darren the Window Cleaner. Um, perhaps not, and uh, perhaps you just think I'm a mad old man waffling on a bit. But it's just, uh, like I said, my opinions are pricing, and hopefully you'll find something there you can use. Anyway, thanks for watching.